Welcome to episode 8 of the Failing Writers Podcast. Brought to you by three chaps who love to write, but often don't quite get round to it. In this week's auditory feast, we talk about reviews, and inspired by last week's interview with crime fiction author OMJ Ryan, we read out the first pages of our very own crime novels. Oh, and there's a bit where Dave can't quite find a book that he's put down somewhere. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Oh, it's all high quality, isn't it? Okay, well, let's um, let's say hello then. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so have you have you guys actually written anything this week, apart from uh, what we had to write? Apart from our task. I have, oh, actually. Yeah. Have, have you, you Tom? What have you written? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of thousand words well or so. Well done, Tommy. On, on, wow. on my novel. Still going on the... Um... Yeah. It's been a lot of dialogue this week. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back through and put some actual world in there. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it, it just, just has... But I guess that's, that's good because that means it's filled with action, doesn't it? Yeah. Rather, yeah. rather than exposition and, and world building. But yeah, quite enjoyed it's it. A tough it's, been... balance. it's a tough balance, isn't it, to achieve? Like how like how much of what goes on should be people talking directly? How much should be reported dialogue? Or how much do you just do, you know, exposition-wise? It's a Yeah, I think... It's a thorny issue, Tom, that you should explore. If you want um, action, then dialogue's a great way of making it happen because different people know different things rather than coming from the omniscient narrator yeah yeah Things kind of drop mm. in and happen and then so it's it's been a lot of that really this week yeah but um i think it's probably easier to go back through and put in chunks of world into dialogue yep. than it is to try and split yep. up your rattling on world building boring exposition I mean, it probably yeah. shouldn't be boring. That's probably what I'm aiming no, Well, that's a good starting point, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Let's make um, it not boring. But it's harder to slip the dialogue back in, isn't it, afterwards? Yeah, I guess so. It's also, it's very hard to be objective when you're writing. Do you know what I mean? You kind of need to have a bit, little bit of time and then go back. I think that's, that's part yeah. of the skill, actually, isn't it? Yeah. I think when you first start, you try and edit as you're going or you try and, and you, just, you tie yourselves in little loops. Yeah, where you just yeah. you do just have to get it out in activity yeah. loops. Yeah, and it does seem really obvious when you read it back as well. It's like, oh god, what the hell was I talking about there? Get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, oh, that's good. that's wonderful. I've been mostly doing podcast, which is quite funny uh, considering we joke oh, about the like, irony. Yeah, do you know what? It's same here. I seem everything seems to have been mm. tied up in in this. Um, I've written about 500 yeah. words of the of the. Do you know what we should do, lads? Week. Let's quit the podcast and let's <laughs> <Yeah>. become writers. <laughs> that's a good. Then that was a good idea. Think of all the time, spare silly. time we'd have now. And then we could tick. We could then mark the podcast as a success, couldn't we? If we if we just said <laughs> we're not doing this anymore you and be became writers, bit, Dave, but I see then, where you you're know, going from. Yeah, that would be mission accomplished. Yeah, <laughs> but everyone's done the homework, though, haven't they? In terms of writing. Yeah. Yeah. Although my computer has just decided nice. to do an yeah. update. Is your dog uh, eating it as well? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, no. Rovers no. It. it is just doing it's just doing stuff. So Have uh, you not memorized it? You, you guys memorize mine so I can just <laughs> it comes out naturally. <laughs> Act it. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this. Yeah, I did as well. Yeah, it's actually been nice. So even though I felt like I haven't had uh, the time to do proper writing. Actually, having a task to do meant like I had to do this, so I, I managed. I fit mm. it. I managed to fit yes, it. Yes, anyway. I was thinking that, Dave. Actually, it does yeah. kind of yeah, force yeah. you to exercise your writing muscles, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Even yeah, if you're not willing to get on your big project. Well, exactly. So that's like most yeah. of the time, writing is something to sort of fit around things that I'm supposed to be doing. But actually, because this was a yeah. real task, it became the thing that I was <laughs> supposed to be doing. Something you were supposed to be doing. Yeah, and that yeah. way, I felt it was it was fine. Does this imply that we need deadlines? I think it does actually. I think, having everyone, it, I think everyone like, does, don't they? Yeah. Even yeah, if it's some I, random self-imposed. Yeah. yeah. Owen says, you know, I've got to, I've got to do these chapters by this. Yeah. Stage. Maybe that's I think yeah. that's, miss, that's what's missing in most people's writing lives. We should, we it, should if, quickly recap, actually, shouldn't we? Because um, let's face it, there's no chance that people are going to listen to two episodes on the trot. Um, <laughs> no. <I> remember, <laughs> if they listen to one episode on the trot, so last happy, week, last we? week we spoke <laughs> one episode on the trot. That was. Yeah. Really, that's weird. Um, so last week we spoke to Owen, who's a proper writer, and uh, he writes crime fiction, 
So we thought we would write the first page of uh, an exciting crime novel of our own creation. Yes. Um, and present it to the class this week. Yes. So that's, that's where we're at. That's what we did. Um, all right. Shall I go first with this one? Yes, David, you I go was, first. I was, I was, yeah. We like the keenness. That's good. Yeah. That. Well, that's uh, so... raised my expectations. I've got a question. Have you, uh, have you like, written the backstory, the actual plot? Well, the see, the, the thing is with this, film, just a, a... this, this is all based on an idea that I've had in my head for years. I think mm, sure I, I remember... i cheating, Dave, for doing a weekly <laughs> well, task that then you're going, that you've been working on for eight years well, or whatever. Yeah, well, no. It's, I remember <laughs> talking about this sort of basic idea of this uh, when I was at uni, which is 20 years ago. Um, I've never done anything with it. And then when we talked about a detective sort of novel, I thought, oh, yeah, I could I could do that. So this is the first, these are the first words that I've written about an idea I've had in my head for about a quarter of a century. It'd be really freaky if this was about people taking the coats off and being murdered or something. <laughs> there, was, there was a moment where I went, to, I, I, you'll notice I mentioned somebody's jacket halfway through. <laughs> and I thought, oh, shit, can I mention that? <laughs> Probably should steer clear of all of all outer garments. You see how easy it is to get embroiled <laughs> in <laughs> Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. It's, um, before you know it, it just takes over. So he, here it is. Here's the first chapter of a detective murder mystery book. The comedian left the stage to a nice round of applause and a couple of reasonably enthusiastic whistles. Not exactly a standing ovation, but then this was a work in progress. He gave the compair a half-hearted high-five as they passed in the wings. He'd seen him before. Bit of a prick. Overly reliant on funny clothes. But he was an old pro and he got the laughs. What else mattered? As he walked down the narrow, dingy corridor, festooned with faded pictures of faded stars who'd once trod these creaky boards, he reminded himself tonight was just a warm-up. Chance to try out new material to see what worked and what didn't, to hone the show. It was a process. An arduous process at times, but it had to be done, and this was at least an encouraging start. As he approached the dressing room, he forced himself to move on from tonight's performance and look ahead. A trick he'd learned from another old pro on the circuit. You can't take back a joke any more than you can shove shit back up your asshole," was his favourite saying. As catchphrases go, it was hardly Bruce Forsyth material, but it made a good point. It's the next show that matters, not the last, so forget the past and look to the future. For the comedian, as it was after every show, the future meant the long drive home. As he opened the dressing room door, he muttered a silent prayer in the faint hope that some star-struck fan might be waiting inside, ready to give him a quick handy before he got on the motorway. But it was not to be. This was not the Hammersmith Apollo. This was a run-down theatre in a backwater town that had started doing a comedy night in a last-ditch attempt to fend off the receivers. Judging by the size of tonight's audience, it probably wouldn't work. He plonked down into a beaten-up chair and regarded his sweaty features in the old-fashioned dressing room mirror. At one time, it must have been beautifully ornate, surrounded with six bright twinkling bulbs to flatter the performer's skin and make them truly sparkle. Now, only two of the bulbs worked, and their wattage was somewhat dimmed, hardly doing any favours to his blotchy, sweat-streaked visage. It was hot on that stage tonight. In fact, it had been a beautifully warm early summer's day, but that cloudless blue sky had given way to a crisp, chilly evening, and he felt himself shivering. He reached down to his tatty blue backpack that was stuffed under the chair and pulled out a crumpled, vintage leather biker's jacket. He'd never been on a bike in his life, but he had a theory that chicks loved the smell of leather, so it travelled with him everywhere, just in case. He stood, shrugged the jacket on, threw his half-finished bottle of water into the bag, and turned to leave. As he did so, one of the remaining bulbs hissed, popped, and winked into nothing, leaving the room in near darkness. Oh, fuck this place, he mumbled and strode towards the door. He stopped in his tracks as he noticed a figure loitering in the gloom. Jesus Christ, you nearly gave me a heart attack. Sorry about that. The figure stepped forward slightly, their face still partly obscured by shadow. Just wanted to congratulate you on the show. So, there was a fan after all, the comedian thought, though they hardly looked like the handjob type. Uh, thank you, he said briskly. Really appreciate it. He took a step forward, signalling his intent to leave, but the fan stepped into the centre of the doorway, blocking his path. Some really funny bits, actually, they continued in a monotonous drawl. Clever observations, intelligent callbacks, good rapport with the audience, although it could do with some work on structure, tidying up here and there. 
the comedian, for once, was left speechless. He couldn't quite tell if he was being praised or heckled. Something about the way the fan was looking at him made him feel uneasy. There was a sadness in their eyes, bitterness, resentment, envy even. Thanks, he managed finally, trying once again to make it clear he was leaving. It's not perfect, but there's plenty of time to make it better before Edinburgh starts. No. The fan shook their head slowly and reached into their pocket. There isn't. The comedian went to speak, but this time, although he had words to say, they simply wouldn't come out. Something had flashed silently between him and the fan, and now, as he tried harder to force the words from his mouth, he felt a warm sensation on his neck. He reached up to touch his Adam's apple, and his fingers were enveloped by a thick, sticky liquid that seemed to be oozing from everywhere. Blood. His blood. He staggered forward and sunk to his knees as his head began to swim. He looked up at the fan with big, pleading eyes and watched as they wiped blood from a thin silver blade and returned it to their pocket before turning and walking away. The comedian reached out, his arm hovering in the air for a moment. Then he fell face first to the dirty cream carpet and looked on, stunned, as a pool of blood began to form around his head, soaking into the fibres. Not so funny now, are you? He heard the fan whisper. And then he heard no more. It's quite long that, Dave, wasn't it? <laughs> it was quite long, yeah. You got, you got right in there. You got in there. <laughs> I did. I got, I got into the swing of it. I couldn't stop myself. Anyway, that's all we've got time for on this episode of the Failing Writers Podcast. <laughs> Join us next week where me and John might get turns. <laughs> Are you trying to say it was over long, Tommy? Is that what you're trying to say? No, it's... no I thought that was that was lovely. I loved your use of uh, visage as well. I yeah, word, yeah. well, I thought I'd get a, a, get a posh word in there, you know. <laughs> yeah, you get yeah, a posh word in now and again. <laughs> Yeah, just to lift, raise the tone a little bit. But um, Dave, are you, are you comfortable sharing the the rest of the outline with the world in the, in the worry well, that it may get stolen and turned into I think a? You've got to hold that back, oh, haven't you? You've got to hold what do you back. think? That's, well, that's where the money well, is, man. On, I'm happy to tell you the basic plot. So the basic plot is about mm. um, this woman who was her dream was to be a sort of stand up comedian. Um, but her overbearing policeman father wouldn't allow it, and he basically made her follow him into the police force. Oh, nice. Um, and then all these murders of comedians start happening, so she has to go undercover in the murky world of stand-up <laughs> to try and uh, flush out the murder. I really like it. And it all happens in like with the backdrop of the Edinburgh Festival. Yeah, nice. I like that, Dave, yeah. Yeah, I like it. Mm. Is the uh, is the comedian based on anyone? What that comedian? Um, yeah. No, he's well, he's just of an am, a, a kind of amalgamation of uh, of sort of slightly slightly seedy stand up comics that I've met in my time. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I did, I did, I've done a couple of stand ups. Have you? Like two or three times, I tried stand up comedy. Um, yeah, but it's not. Oh, it's it's bloody <laughs> hard work. That I think that was the problem. I mean, there's the being funny part that. You know that as well, yeah. but it's a lot of hard work and commitment and terrifying. To, to become a comedian. Um, the, the sheer terror, or, yeah. Pretty terrifying, yeah. I remember this. So this, the the last time I did it, um, it was at a night in Leeds, and um, I was sort of due on in the second half, and the bloke who was running it, I was sat there with my girlfriend and a couple of mates, kept, like tapped me on the shoulder just before the end of the first half and said. Oh, the bloke who was supposed to go on next um, has done a runner. Um, he he doesn't want to do it anymore. He's he's run away. So can you go on now? I was like, oh shit. Um, so yeah, I went on and uh, yeah, it's 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 really quite difficult to to sort of constantly go on stage and read out all these things that you've been working on for ages and like it's, it's nice when you get a laugh, but when people don't connect with something, it's it's quite soul destroying. So yeah. the thought of doing that every Did night. You just say read out. Well, not read out, but no, well, no, but like out you the know. jokes. That, yeah, that, that might, uh... <laughs> could have been the problem. joke number three. <laughs> that, might, yeah, that might have been where you went wrong. Yeah, maybe. let me get know. me readers on. Hang on, bear with me a second. <laughs> what did that? No, which one did I do last? Was it joke number four? Or joke, <laughs> right, joke number. We'll just do joke number seven. Knock Nick. No, I think I've written that wrong. Hang on a sec. Uh... <laughs> Thing is, for stand up as well, I think. There's like a, a fulcrum point, isn't there, of um, where people are willing to laugh at comedians that they know or have seen before or yeah. they, they go with an expectation of laughing. Yeah. Whereas when it's new comedians, there's more an expectation of this might be a bit yeah. rubbish. Yeah. And I there's think a certain that, stress that comes from watching comedians. 
Yeah. But yeah. No. I think it's the, like the first two minutes is just quite stressful. Please don't be. Crying. Yeah. Well, I find this. You know, on things like uh, Britain's Got Talent or what have you. Like, I always think that the comedians is like it's the hardest thing because mm. it's the only sort of act you can do where right from the start you're setting out what what reaction you expect from the audience and the audience going in <laughs> that have a very fixed idea of what they expect from the act you know you, mm. like you want them to laugh and they want to laugh at you so it sets out that challenge immediately whereas you know if you watch a play or you know go to see a singer or whatever it's kind of oh i just want to enjoy this mm. yeah and you don't really get sort of sympathy laughter no or it's very obvious <laughs> no. if you do whereas if you're a, yeah. a singing act you can still get kind of a decent round of applause yeah. that makes it sound like everyone was yeah, all right you've with got that. A, it's got to be a really yeah. bad song for no one to applaud at the end of it yeah. in a gig, hasn't it? <laughs> imagine, if, imagine that. If the Rolling Stones did a new song and it was just silence when it finished. Just a couple of... Yeah. At the back of the room. Yeah. Tommy, have you ever done it? No, I haven't. See, I, I haven't. always imagined you'd be very good. Yeah, no, I just, I just don't think it. I've got the, um, the guts to do it, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, it's no quite nerve-wracking. I, it's, it's, I would it's, have to, I'd have to learn it from, you know, learn it as rote, and then if anyone heckled me, I'd probably just cry and run away. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was the one time in my life where I sort of thought I understand why a lot of performers uh, become alcoholics, because like yes. the thought of yeah. going on stage like totally sober was <laughs> terrifying. A couple of vodka. Yeah, and so I had a yeah. couple of drinks just to sort of, go, and it, and it sort of struck me, Christ, if I did this every day then I'd have to drink every day in order to do it. And it wouldn't take long to become a proper alcoholic. So, yeah, yeah. that's another reason uh, that I didn't succeed. Probably I didn't have the commitment to become an addict. That's why I never <laughs> succeeded as a stand-up. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I'd love to see you up there, Tommy. Well, I'd love to see you too, Baddy. I'm not saying that you wouldn't be excellent as well. Well, I've, but, I've uh, already proved that I, I wouldn't you be. you've been so. very good with a, with a crowd, Tommy. I always thought if I did do it, which I never will, um, <laughs> that I would be more prone to go in and, and not have material as such mm. and kind of... Dangerous game. About, yeah, exactly. And that's the trouble. That's like double mm. double dangerous, isn't it? Mm. Kind of made it harder for yourself to start off I was at, I was at a thing where somebody did that. Um, so it was my old voice agent's Christmas party and they, they were opening up a sort of comedian stand-up comedies wing of the agency. So they did this mm. thing of like trying to encourage new people to to go on stage and do like two minutes. So I did, two, and it was the, it was the best and easiest one I did because I did it as like a character, which is so much easier than doing it as yourself. Mm. So yeah. someone else did like their little bit of, uh, of stand up. I went on and did like a character thing for two minutes. And this one guy was just like, no, I haven't got anything. I'm just going to go on stage. And, um, you know, I think I'm quite a funny guy. I'll just go and just go and talk for two minutes. <laughs> so he went up on stage and he went, go. And he just went, oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> that was that was it for two minutes. <laughs> so yeah, but well, you just stayed there. You just stayed you just there stayed for two minutes. There, looking yeah, at the looking audience. at the audience. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't come off stage <laughs> until the two minutes are up. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Wow. Yeah. So I'd say take some balls though. To do yeah, that. absolutely. Or some narcissism. Uh, right up sure to the it. moment. Yeah, it might have been a rude awakening that one. <laughs> Although I did once go and see a client who claimed that he went to a Lee Evans gig. Um, at a relatively large venue and Lee Evans didn't turn out. Lee Evans was late, I believe. <laughs> right. um, so apparently this guy decided he'd just go on. No, no plan or anything. <laughs> just picked up the mic um, and did a brilliant set that everyone was <laughs> laughing and Bloody clapping. Hell, some... And then he woke up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He used to well, meet some yeah. delusional clients, didn't we? were we? like, all right, good. Yeah, that, good. that actually happened, that didn't it? Doesn't sound true, yeah. <laughs> So we were, we were going to talk about reviews today. Betty, did you get any reviews for your whoa, whoa. stand-up? Whoa, whoa, John, John. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, we haven't finished that first section yet, have we? I'm jumping yeah. ahead. I mean, oh, it felt like a long that. section because yeah. Dave wrote three <laughs> chapters. Yeah. Sorry. I thought, we'd, I thought we'd moved on. No, write that, write that question down, though, John. No, don't waste it. Use that later on. <laughs> my, my computer's working, by the way, so I, I can go next if you want me to, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, mine's only short, so <laughs> I'll just... Look, it wasn't again. that long. We did say chapter, a chapter, chapter, didn't we? Chapter, yeah. did oh, we thought we said first page, to be honest. Oh. All right. No, I've, I've only chapter done one page. page. I mean, we can only expect just... people to listen for so long, can't we? <laughs> it just <laughs> spilt, it spilt slightly over onto a second page, but only a dribble. Oh, it felt longer. Mine is called 
uh, deadly advantage uh, in homage. Oh, hang on, hang on a minute. minute. <laughs> hang on a in minute. In homage. You're allowed to do homages. Homages, aren't you? You can do a homage. Uh, mm. Right. I, I might have to call that something else. Uh, eventually, you know, when it comes out as a yeah, book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so, because otherwise it's going to clash with Dave's deadly laughter, yeah. isn't it? When we're on Jonathan Ross, and uh, you yeah, bring Owen right. on as a surprise guest. <laughs> With his Here's lawyer. the guy you yeah. stole your titles <laughs> off. Keith stood on the manicured lawn of College House, looking up at the imposing 17th century corner tower. He was trying to remember the collective noun for crows. Twenty years as head caretaker, he'd never seen anything like it. There were hundreds of them, looping in the sky, dropping behind the crenulated wall or settling high on the parapet to watch him with Hitchcockian menace. He hated birds especially the great big ugly featureless kind. Sweating already with the prospect of having to get a ladder, go up on the roof and investigate, he wiped his bald, wrinkled brow again. Bloody boys must have left something up there. Hilarious end-of-term prank for him to deal with. Stuck-up little pricks. The corridors were empty as he made his way up to the top of the building. Only two or three boys waiting to be picked up for the summer in Range Rovers or Bentleys by parents in no hurry to have them back. The teachers were long gone, six days since the last lesson, and hardly a whiff of tobacco lingered in the staff toilets. Up on the roof, Keith leaned the ladder against the tower. It was another twelve feet up to the turret. Trying to ignore the screech of birds and the thirty-five-foot drop yawning to his left, he began to climb. Almost at the top, a sudden beat of wings above his head made him stop and look up at several large, sinister silhouettes that seemed to be waiting for him on the wall. He paused to let his heart catch up, then slowly, shakily reached up for the next rung. Just as the largest crow leaned down and stabbed at his hand, he cried out, swinging his hand around wildly, only succeeding in making the ladder rock horrifyingly from side to side. He froze again, gripping the ladder tightly, but another peck to the head made him gather his nerve, and quickly he hoisted his ageing frame over the ramparts of the tower and to the safety of its floor. Panting, Keith looked up then shuddered. In the centre of the square walled roof was a mass of shimmering blue-black wings that twitched and extended and flailed. Mustering all the courage he could, he moved towards them, wafting them with his arms and crying, Shoo! Go on! Get away, you big creepy bastards! The air rushed with their collective takeoff, and the object of their fascination was suddenly revealed. Keith let out a strangled groan and stepped backward, his lunch rushing back into his mouth. In front of him, in the centre of the tower walls, tied down with heavy rope, were the grisly remains of a human body. The eyes, now just dark cavities, the mouth a wide-open grin of horror, void of lips and cheeks. Spitting out what was left in his mouth, Keith squinted at it, a sudden tremble of recognition. The long tartan skirt and the shock of thick white hair suggested that this was all that was left of the head of English, Mrs. McAllister. Remnants of thick black tape ran around the sides of her head, picked and shredded by the birds. As Keith moved quickly away towards the ladder, shadows fluttered across the floor, and for a single terrible moment, he thought it was the body moving. He took one more look, as the crows, no longer intimidated by his presence, began to return. Then he heard it, a sound that froze him to the bone the sound he would hear in his unbroken sleep for years to come. A low, hollow moan that at first he assumed was some strange bird call before the horrible realisation that it was coming from the half-eaten woman. A crow reached into the eye socket to pluck out a wet morsel of flesh and the head twitched, confirming Keith's worst fear. Mrs McAllister was being eaten alive. Jesus... Glad I've had my lunch. Bloody hell. There you go. I, um, I've solved the mystery. <laughs> the crows did it. <laughs> you ruined the whole book, Dave. <laughs> I did. It's true. Is it a murderer that dresses up as a crow? <laughs> He's just one massive crow. No one really realises till the end. He realises he's not really close up. He's just actually bigger than he's a human-sized crow. <laughs> With that one ear really close to it. He's not really close, nice you know. Twist. He's just... Nice twist there. He's big. <laughs> It's a cost, and it got away with it if it wasn't for you darn kids. I may remember that Mr. Core. <laughs> I reckon it was him. Uh, well, spooky. Think you yes. should call the book, John. Murder, murder. Murder. 
murder, murder, murder. It's a murder, murder of crows, isn't it? Murder, murder, nice. murder. murder, murder. Yes. Oh, then, yeah, so murder. now, using Owen's logic, you'd have to then have the titles of your next books. Would have to be like Killing, Killing and Death, Death <laughs> and Danger, Danger. <laughs> Stabby, stabby. Yeah. You write, you writing these down. Yeah, these are good. Write, yeah. write this down. Don't this lose down. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that was that was very atmospheric, <laughs> yeah. though, wasn't it? it was, you owe um, me a tenner, yeah, though, Dave. Awesome. I told you you'd get an architectural Creepy. reference into his first line. <laughs> yeah, you are. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like a bit mm, of architecture. So, John, when you, I assume you didn't sit on that for twenty years like Dave, but I assume that just came fresh to you because you did the task <laughs> properly. Yeah, yeah, no, straight out. Yeah. As you were doing yeah, it, right. did yeah. you feel? Do you feel there's a, a story behind that then now? Oh no, yeah, I know. I I thought up the story before ah, right, I okay. started writing it. I did mine the opposite way. Yeah. I just started writing, and then oh wow, Ooh. you are not a planner. Kind either. of. What are they called? Only... They're called pantsters, aren't yeah. they? People who call write what? The seat of pantsters. You said hamsters. Who... <laughs> hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> hamsters in your pantsters. What's, hamster? What's hamster? What do hamsters do? That... Do they not? Maybe hamsters <laughs> just don't plan things like other rodents. They don't plan things. They just get on that wheel. Yeah. And go. Just, yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit of a hamster. <laughs> I think probably. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. Not entirely. You know, I like to. I like to have a rough, a decent plan. But. Um, but not in this. Not in this. Case. You know, like Owen was saying about how he's it's fully mm. planned out, and each chapter's got a. That's what this chapter's mm. going to yeah. do. I'm not I sure. Don't know. I, I used that, to think that but, way, but um, yeah. I do it more and more often now. Just sort of. So you do. You do plan. Yeah, I was going to say your yeah. um the, anything for you. It it seems well planned. I mean, it, everything comes at yeah, the right I, place. You know, the beats are in the right place. Yeah, I, I spent a lot more time. Well, t- Owen was talking about the sort of beat yeah. method. Beat sheets. Um, so I try and use that. Yeah, I'd use that a lot more often these days. Just tr- just to basically plan out, yeah. like you know, what scenes or chapters do I need, and what's mm. basically going to happen in each one. Just uh, more than anything, it, it stops you from having to write stuff that you know you, that you're not going to need. Because, you know, if you just sit yeah, and write, yeah. you can end up doing an hour on something. And then at the end of it, you go, actually, I don't really need that. That doesn't that doesn't help. Well, you see, but I think that stuff has a has a value. The stuff that you write and then chuck yeah. out because it, it, it builds your own understanding. It it's yeah. layers, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. layers, yeah. layers yeah. into stuff. So it gives a depth, I think. Neither's right. There's no yeah. right way no, of doing it, is there? There's no right is just wrong. Everyone's, everyone's individual, and that's yeah. fine. I think you're right. That's a very good point, though, Tommy. I think that some of the stuff that you edit out... It still exists, will inform. It? It, yeah, well, it'll, it'll inform stuff later on, or it'll inform a character in a way that will come out in a different way, perhaps. Yeah, but like, like I said, it'll, it's that kind of depth. It'll just help yeah. your understanding yeah. of them. Yeah. But, right. Each to their own. Each to their own. So, well, so what would the um, where would this go next, John? What would the... He's not willing yeah. to tell us. He wants to save it. Oh, no, I'm going to save page. it. I, would like, I quite like the story, so I might... Uh, Get right I like that, uh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's. Uh, I think it could be quite interesting writing about... Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be about privilege. It's going to be about... Privileged uh, birds. Privileged birds. Yeah. <laughs> Entitlement and... The you pecking know, order, school. Would say. <laughs> the pecking order. That's good. That's oh, the title. How we laugh. The how we laugh. pecking order. <laughs> good i quite like it um yeah so uh yeah yeah i think i think it's got uh it's got legs maybe yep nice well i enjoyed it for one oh, thanks, is, is it good destined to, is it a, is it a detective drama i think so yeah 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 definitely because i don't think murder things always need a detective do they they can just be a no not necessarily a happening yeah yeah or the detective doesn't have to yeah. be the main character yeah, no, it's, you know? it's definitely a whodunit it would need someone to no i was just saying that you know it, the de- detective doesn't have to be the sort of main character. No, you know? no yeah. that's right. It has to be a detective, doesn't it? Yeah, so someone has to detect to things. Be yeah. in the police, yeah. Well, that's true. That's a good way of putting it as well, yeah. Bit of uh, Miss Marple going on. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about this the other day because there's two sort of main ways of uh, of doing a mystery like that, isn't it? That, like, sometimes... Um, the reader or the the viewer, whatever, finds stuff out at the same time as the detective does. So that you know they're 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 doing all this mm. work, and as facts are revealed, we as the audience get to get to know them. Yeah. Or well, there's another method where right at the start you see the person who does the murder. Yeah. You know, and then the Columbo method. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then you know, you, so we as the audience are privileged to information the d- detective doesn't mm. have, and um, we should have asked Owen about these things, shouldn't we? You know, whether like hmm. is that something that you make a decision on right at the start? Because I know his his latest book that I'm reading, you you find, you see the name of the 
killer right at the beginning. Um, so oh, you know, right. we, so that we know more than the detective does right at the start. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just, you know, an interesting mm. approach. I suppose some detective novels do a bit of both as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you sometimes you know a little bit more than the detective and sometimes the detective knows a little bit more than you yeah. and will only reveal it when they're ready. Yes. <laughs> playing, playing with us. That's what it's all mm. about at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Mm. So, Tommy. Right. Well, mine's a lot shorter than both of yours. But, good, because um, we don't really have long left. Yeah, so it's probably good. I'll just read it quickly. <laughs> right. Uh, as yet untitled. Um, deadly murder. Let's call it that, shall we? As opposed to the other kinds of murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She had no idea why she was in the woods or how she got there. She looked down at her hands and saw they were dripping with fresh blood. Her brain felt like it could only cope with thinking single thoughts one at a time, as if waking from a bad dream of which she could no longer remember the details, but the feelings remained. Fear, anger, rage. Her heart missed a beat as she instinctively scanned her body for signs of any trauma. It was difficult to make out in the wispy moonlight, but there were superficial scratches on her leg, maybe on her face, and some five or six straight cuts on the inside of her forearm, which whilst they weren't old, they weren't fresh either. Her lungs began to heave in the night air as panic started to build, fed by pure confusion. Her focus drew wider, desperately trying to make sense of the scene. A clearing, old trees, the ground littered with branches on freshly disturbed dirt. And at the base of one of the trees, at the edge of the clearing, something. A trick of the light? The trunk of a fallen oak? Or a figure curled up asleep? She moved to take a closer look barely able to keep her balance shuffling across the uneven woodland floor. Her bloodied hands reached down to try and wake what she could now clearly see was a person. She grabbed an arm and rolled them over. An empty face stared up at her, one eye gouged and hanging out of its socket, the other staring past her, glassy and dead. Vicious scratches punctuated the cheeks, and where a throat should be, just strands of dangling flesh, as if ripped out by some wild animal. She collapsed to her knees, numb, shock overwhelming and drowning out her panic. As a quietly excited voice came from the darkness behind her, You did well again, Miss Jones. You're a natural, aren't you? Another notch on the arm for you, my dear. It's good. A little Um, game. It's a little game. Mm. Assassins. Oh, that's quite creepy, that, that, Tommy. I like that. Mm-hmm. So the idea is that the guy at the end is the serial killer, yeah. but he gets his victims to kill each other. Yeah. In kind of like a Mis- drug-induced, hypnotic kind of... So he kind of finds people, holds them hostage, brainwashes yeah. them, gets them to kill other people. Then obviously with the detective thing, you've got all the lovely working out of the fact that his DNA yeah. is not near anything. Nice. Yeah. You've got the DNA, and then they can think they've found the person that's done it. And then they end up... Because, like, this one, she's obviously she's obviously won a few fights. This one, she's a yeah. good one. So she's going to have a DNA on Lord. She's the serial killer. But yeah, then they find no. out that she's actually she's just, just another missing just girl. A puppet. Whoa. A pawn in his deadly game. Oh, yeah, yes. A, sort of psychological thriller, that one, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. I like it. But I just I like the idea of the misdirection and kind yeah. of the... Mm. The darkness, yeah. dark. making people fight to the death um, without them realising and then kind of physically marking them as a tally yeah. chart. Yeah, yeah I like that, Tommy. Think... So, yeah, should have it finished by next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah just, just, week. just then, uh, bosh, bosh the rest yeah. out. The only thing with that is every time I hear, she was called Miss Jones, wasn't she? And every time mm. I hear Miss Jones, I can only hear it in the voice of Rigsby from Rising Down. He is actually the killer, isn't he? You've kind of really <laughs> is that him? Is it him? Yeah. Is it him? yeah, yeah. Oh, Miss Jones. <laughs> Hello, Miss Jones. <laughs> speak like that, but yeah. <laughs> that yeah, would be a... Well, that was a good twist, though, isn't it? <laughs> the, the crazed landlord sets his guests on each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so did we enjoy writing the first two chapters for you guys? The first page of a, a crime novel? I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really it. enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah. It was just good. To... I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Did you enjoy it more than the erotica? That, there's a question for you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it was a different sort. No, Betty really enjoyed the erotica. I did. <laughs> he didn't want to answer that, did he? I enjoyed it in it like I, I enjoyed the process of writing the erotica. Um, but 
as a kind of a bit of entertainment in itself. Whereas this, yeah. I enjoyed. It was more up your street. It was more comedic, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whereas this was more sort of, you know, involved a bit more thought and a bit more um, planning. I mean, luckily for Dave, to be honest, uh, you know, gore and death turns him on just as much <laughs> exactly. sexually yeah. as, as the yeah. So it's, it's six and two <laughs> really? threes for him. It's all the same thing. Yeah. But no, I did. I enjoyed doing this a lot, and it's and also it's it's incredible, isn't it? Now you start writing one thing, and it starts to open up other possibilities as you go on. I think what what is amazing is that you can write a page of words, and all of a sudden, even though there's no other words written, there is this trailing tale yes. of a tale. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. That suddenly exists. There are threads to follow. Yeah, and you can kind of see it quite clearly. Yeah. And it makes you wonder why have we never managed to get to the end of any of these threads before? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does, it does in a way. <laughs> to be honest, it would have been rubbish as a podcast, wouldn't it? The mildly successful <laughs> yeah. writers. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been, neither nor, is it? No. It's true. But um So are we are we all are we all thinking that that we could continue with uh with Obviously these? we could, like, Dave. I mean that's yeah, this but, is the uh, very but, but premise we? of why we're here, isn't it? <laughs> yes, we could. Will we? That's we could. that's the question. I mean, yeah. Do you have plans to write the rest of that book, Tom? Uh, possibly, actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I could actually see myself doing that. John? Yeah, I I uh, I would quite like to. Yeah. It's not the, really the sort of thing that I would normally want to write, but actually, having started, it's quite fun. Isn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of power yeah. in it, isn't there? In a weird kind of way, with a with yeah. a. Well, we've all isn't... we've all killed somebody now, haven't we? So. <laughs> isn't that the joy of writing in a way, though? Is the like the playing godness. Of yeah, it. kind of yeah. is, but then at the same time, when, when you're on a roll, Fun. you feel like you're just keeping up with the story rather than creating it. Oh, I, yeah. I certainly yeah. do anyway. It's quite a lot of responsibility as well, though, isn't it? Because you've got the fate of these people in your hands. Yeah, you're right, actually, Dave. We should just park this and not just let's just leave it. <laughs> let's, not, let's not do anything with it. I mean, it does sound like a lot of work as well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. A lot of work, yeah. a lot of responsibility. Yeah. No, you've taught me into it, Dave. Right. Yeah, I'm just deleting it now. It's gone. All that planning. We're going to have to plan it. I'm not sure about this. No, it's, it's interesting what you were saying, though. I think when, when writing's going well, it is, it is a bit like having a lucid dream. Yeah. Isn't it? It's like, uh, you know, you know how in dreams you get to... You know, you you get to kind of play out your most depraved fantasies without any actual consequences. Mm, cheesecake and yeah. boobies. Yeah, they're sort of like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. They're like consequence laboratories, yeah. aren't they? Dreams in a way, and it's like uh, you can live out someone else's life. Yeah, where you get to explore all the all the choices that you didn't make in your life because that would have led you to some very. I feel like places. we should have some kind of sting, but uh, um, coming in there, that's like a slightly poncy comment of the week. <laughs> Just when you called it <laughs> consequence laboratories, <laughs> dreams of <Come> consequence <laughs> laboratories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's not true. You know, I'm not saying it's not true. Might be poncy, but it's true. <laughs> It's poetic, John. Well done. It's right. very poetic, yeah. Thanks, man. But it's true, though, isn't it? You, you know, you get to sort of when, when it works and, and it's all sort of flowing out. You get to you get to do things that you wouldn't do or make decisions that you personally wouldn't make, and that's that's, that's the sort it. of that's what you know when you hit gold, though, isn't it? When you when you're yeah. surfing the wave of it, and then yeah. s one of your yeah. characters does something, and you kind of go, "No way!" Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. I can't I believe they've done, done that. that. I so wasn't neglecting the fact that your fingers are there typing away. So yeah, but that's that's the sort of you know that's the beauty of the development of it, and that's what I that's what I'm looking forward to with this is is sort of developing the the sort of I haven't even written the main character in that chapter, but I'm already quite excited about developing mm. her and her sort of backstory. Mm. But I tell you what, yeah. we did do though. We what listened to Owen, didn't brilliant. we? About um, killing in the first yeah the first yes ex yeah exactly straight into yeah. the meat of it get to yeah. the action i guess that's the thing though isn't it is like okay that's so we we had a we had a hint for what to put in the first chapter but then the second chapter is totally open isn't it it could go in a yeah you're right we should give over directions. the ring and see what we need to do in the <laughs> yeah, second right, chapter, what would you do with chapter two <laughs> yeah no you're right good idea good idea <laughs> Have you got a question, John? 
Sorry, you've got a question. Have you got a question, John? Or have I got a question? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, we've moved on. This We're is, in the next yeah. section now. <laughs> this is the next section. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was going to ask about reviews. Is it reviews? Reviews. It was about reviews. <laughs> yeah. How did you know that? I don't, oh, just guess. I just guess. Just guess. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if uh, you had any reviews for your uh, stand up. Yes, uh, I have. I did find a. I'm review. guessing they came in quite an informal way. Or, um, or were there any no. actual written reviews? Yes, yeah, there was a written when you review. Say, is that your nice way of oh, saying right. hecklers, John? <laughs> review informal <laughs> reviews. Of. Mm. Boo, People get afterwards off. going. That was shit. Well, I so the first the first time I ever did it was it, it was a little night above a pub, um, as part of a, a like a it was a Manchester Fringe event um, that somebody invented a few years ago, mm. and there was a, like a little write up of it in a little newspaper, uh, and I found and the sort of night was sort of reasonably warmly reviewed, and I was one of the warmer ones. Oh, um, that's nice. Yeah, that, so it was nice. Is that like a, a, a classic format compare for stand-ups, or was it like an open mic you anyone could it was go No, on? it was exactly that. So it was a compare, it was the guy who put the night on, and then there was... It started with, like, somebody who was quite an established stand-up who was um, getting stuff ready for his Edinburgh show. Um, mm. And then the rest of us were all sort of, you know, newbies, really. So this was my sort of first time. Um, and they... they the reviewer said sort of quite nice things. Um, but then I sometimes wonder, like, is that worse than bad? Because if you read the review, the, the things that really stand out are the... They, he absolutely slated some of the people there. Like, this, they get some terrible reviews. Like, what is this per? Why are they? Why do they think they can be funny? Um, they were rubbish, and that really <laughs> stands out. Whereas mine just said, you know, you get words like oh, competent or, like, you know, <laughs> sort of <laughs> solid... Yeah, no, you're looking for something. Yeah, yeah, I am, yeah, yeah, I'm after it. Got coke, cat, speed pills, mandy brown, black, cat size, dogs, legs, cheese plants, squirrels, nuts, whatever you want, mate. Oh, no, actually, uh, I'm looking for um, a review. Jesus Christ, keep it down, man. You'll get us both banged up, won't you? That's some serious shit, that is. I know, I know, but I'm desperate. Look, look it doesn't have to be five stars. Just, just anything you've got, yeah? Please, I'm, I'm jonesing like mad here. Yeah? Right, right, keep it down. I might have something for you. 100 quid, right? Yeah, yeah, whatever, sorted, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, here you are. Try this on for size, oh, mate. yes. Oh, cheers, yeah. Oh, come here, come here, come to Daddy. It, wait, what? Competent? Are you fucking kidding me? That's as far as I could go and keep a clean conscience, mate, you know what I mean? I've got standards. I think that's amazing for a first performance. Well, I'd, yeah, yeah, but it's 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 quite sort of, you know, wishy-washy, isn't it? Can you it's remember any of your material, Dave? Because uh, if you just want to run some... Me and John can give you oh, an instant review if you want. Do you know what? I don't think I can. There was something about the Chuckle Brothers. Um, they always go down well, don't yes, they? Yes. Uh, Is that the punchline? I, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, I get these nice words, and I, I wonder if it is it is it better to have you know something that sticks in the memory as a review, because you know it's damned mm. with faint praise. Yeah, um, so yeah. it's the, the question of like, what is a review for, uh, or who is a review for? Is 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 the review? Do you look for reviews in what you've done for yourself to give yourself a bit of a you know bit of an ego boost, or are the reviews there to try and get other people? Uh, interested in what you're doing and in that sense it's surely it's better to have a review that is extreme in some way or another <laughs> do you know what i mean probably not extremely bad yeah not extremely bad <laughs> no. i would say but i don't know if extremely bad is is likely to make people remember the name of that person more than the word competent no i think the competence that that, that just slips by people they don't remember it so it's yeah, not really a big deal exactly yeah just you know so i don't think you need to worry about whatever it, yeah. well no i was going to say i have done reviewing other people because i uh, over time have signed up to a few different things where you get to read other people's work and sort of review like a peer review sites mm. um so there was one called trigger street i think it was set up i think it was set up by the actor formerly known as kevin spacey mm. and it was um just a place where you could upload screenplays um and other people would read them and review them um did you do one of your reviews for I, not, no, not a day review. I yeah. did. I did some reviews for other people. Yeah, um, quite scathing, some of them. 
Um, because like the idea was, I sort of signed up thinking, right, uh, this is it's an opportunity to read other people's mm. work, and by doing so, try to learn a bit about the sort of mm. craft. And but all it did was get me sort of wound up at how um, bad some of them were. And really, I don't know. I've got not entitled to be wound up about it because I I never actually uploaded anything for other people to to look at. So I always think though, it's good though, isn't it? If everyone else is rubbish. <laughs> Because that's, that's putting you well, yeah, it near is. the top of the pile. Yeah, but only if you then actually do something yourself. <laughs> Otherwise... Yeah, that's true as well. You would actually need to do <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, I was halfway there. There we go again with the actually doing I something. I know, I know. Um, and it's a similar thing. That's why I signed up to the advanced review copy thing, which is how I've been reading Owen's stuff. Um, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> look, the whole point of that was to be able to read other people's work um, and you know, try to try sort of mm. learn and, and try and hurt them. So you're try and to hurt, hurt them. as many try writers as you can. Yeah, if I can hurt to them, eliminate them from the pool. Yeah, if I hurt the them deep down, mm. yeah, in yeah, such yeah, a stop. crippling way yeah, yeah. that they never write anything and again. Step in, take their place. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Tommy, have you? Uh, do you have the mental resilience to handle a bad review? How do you? How do you um, respond? If Katie tells me I've ironed her trouser legs wrong, I get a little bit twitchy. <laughs> um, but do it right, then, John. <laughs> I don't think I was criticised very much as a child. Have you tried think... doing it when she's not wearing them? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know she does wear them. You got criticised too much as a child? No, I think I, I don't think I was criticised at all when I was a child. Oh, I think if you I, in one of these I terrible stupid... left-wing parenting houses? No, exactly. Of... Modern parents. Oh, John's drawn on the wall again. <laughs> I think well, if, I, if I did something stupid, my mum... At least mom... we've still got the paint out from last time. <laughs> my mum, yeah, she just used to ignore it and hope I'd grow out of it. Or maybe right. she, I think she maybe assumed that I was just a, a little bit mentally deficient and there was nothing <laughs> anyone could do about Nothing can it, be know. done about this. Don't tell him off. Don't tell him off. He's not, <laughs> doesn't know any he's better. <laughs> no, but what about you, Tommy? I can't imagine you taking re- a bad review particularly well. Am I wrong? Are you, you quite... That, that I wouldn't quite in it itself, well. that quite sounded rhino. like quite a bad review of... Tom's I'm not sure what you're saying there. You're saying I would get upset by bad reviews or yeah, I wouldn't I think get you up- would. I think you would. But I could you think be I wrong. would get upset? Yeah, I think you would get upset. Um, Depends what it was for. Yeah. I don't know. Everyone does, though, doesn't it? The people that say, oh, just ignore them completely. Mm. I'm yeah, not sure that's... Not the only way you can do that is by not seeing them. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you've seen it and if it's something you've done and someone's saying you know, criticising it in a non-constructive way. No yeah. offence, Dave. And then <laughs> that can kind of strike somewhere in the middle of you, can't you? I think there's an element of just... I think it would depend what mood I'm in. Because sometimes I'm like, <laughs> well, whatever. I don't really care what people think. It's a skill, though, isn't it? To be able to take to be able to take that sort of criticism um, and sort of use it rather than... Because I've done that in the past where I like somebody's said, oh, this isn't very good. And mm. my response has been, well, what do you know? You, they, they know nothing. What are they talking about? Rather than going, okay, well, let's think about this. You know, what, what do they mean by that? Can I, can I improve yeah, yeah. that? Is can there I make anything that in here that's useful? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I did a, uh, I haven't told you about this yet, actually. I'll need to, I'll tell you about this some other time. But I did a, a, just a writing class, a local writing class in the local library uh. Uh, with a, a little group of people. And, uh, Around that time, I was just kind of finishing um, a book that I'd written for young teens. And I sent it to uh, just a handful of the lovely ladies that I did the the class with. Yeah. And uh, they were all so sweet. But, you know, when people don't want to be unkind, but they can tell that you can tell they hated everything about it. It was a bit (laughs) Uh. like that. because it's a it's a skill, isn't it? Because you've got yeah. to, you've what got did to find, they say? You've got to find something then? you like. So a lot of the feedback was like, "Yeah, I really like the title." <laughs> or, you know, what like, a lovely the font. Formatting was, what a font. Yeah, exactly. The formatting was very clear. Your, your spelling's very good, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a couple of them never actually replied at all, which in some ways is well, maybe even worse because it's almost like it? you're saying. I'm a little bit embarrassed for you. Did they? I did can't they, find anything nice to say <laughs> about this. Did they never turn up nothing. to any class ever again? They just like disappeared. <laughs> exactly, just avoid me completely. Wow, yeah, but yeah. You know, one day you'll go into the library, and they'll be there, just, just all sat around on, on a different day. <laughs> and look and go, oh, oh, John. <laughs> uh, we were just hello um, reading. Well, this uh, this to... is the knitting 
group in books away. This is the knitting group. <laughs> Very similar. Yes. We're, we're, we're in the knitting. You still trying to write or? <laughs> we're in the wool shop, aren't we? Oh, no, we've come to the library <laughs> the by library. mistake. Oh, oh, so terribly sorry. And then Marjorie would come wandering along going, sorry, I'm late for book group. <laughs> Writer's group. <laughs> oh, John. Uh, this is Marjorie. She, uh, you won't. There was a spare seat after you, and so she's, yeah, she's here instead of you, because she can write. <laughs> but uh, yeah, see, that's what I mean, though, isn't it? It's like, is is that a little bit worse? Wouldn't it have been? Would it have been better in some ways if they'd just said, John, um, don't know how to tell you this, but this this is really bad. This just this is yeah. terrible. Would that have been more helpful than? I don't know. I think I knew that anyway, if I'm being totally honest. It's funny, isn't it? It's, it's that classic it's thing that I was talking about before, about just giving something a bit of time and then rereading it. Yeah. Because I literally just kind of finished it. I did, in fairness, it was like a, it was like a first draft, basically. Yeah. It, was, it was really, it wasn't worked in any way. But I learned a very big uh, um, lesson with that book. Mm. Uh, the, well, yeah, definitely the biggest mistake was... Sitting down to write it in the first place. <laughs> yeah. According to Marjorie no, and Doris. I, no, that my protagonist was way too passive, that he didn't drive the action uh. at all, in fact. And having like read more books about writing since, that is one of the key things that you know keeps coming up. If the main character doesn't have like a, a clearly defined goal, yes. then the story's not going to go anywhere, yeah. is it? I mean, it seems obvious now I'm saying now it. You've, <laughs> now you've said it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was a bit like that. I mean, I... I I was trying to I was trying to do a lot of shoehorning with this book because of the sort of idea of it, which I won't go into because it's not particularly interesting. But yeah, no, but you know, it is it's failing uh, does teach you a lot. Yeah, you? maybe you, know, you don't you don't learn from being successful. You actually learn from no. You make money from being successful, don't you? You. No, that's right. <laughs> I haven't got there yet, but you know. But maybe that's, that's why we're here. Maybe that's, but then maybe that's our problems. Maybe we as individuals don't have clearly defined. Goals. Well, yeah, that's a very good that's point. Why we're unable as the main characters as the main in our own story. Yeah, as our own yeah. protagonists. That's, that's why we can't true. drive ourselves forward. But I think um, reviews are quite important for some people. So, uh, like, particularly self-publishers, I think. Um, like, as Owen started out as, and mm. a lot of people are doing these days, reviews are really sort of all that matters. Uh, in in a certain sense, because when you're when people are buying mm. a book, you don't really know if a book is any good until you've read it. But you can tell um, just by looking at the cover. <laughs> <kind>. that's, <laughs> well, yeah, well, there, there are certain sayings that would suggest otherwise. <laughs> but you know, you, you mean you don't you don't know if a book's going to be any good until you've read it. Um, so it's not the quality of your book that necessarily determines whether someone's going to buy it or not. It's the quality of the reviews in a certain, to a certain extent. Mm. But then your book has to be good to get the good reviews, doesn't it? Mm. Well, yeah, exactly. Or, you know, if unless you can cheat the system in some way and just get, get Marjorie to give you a well, good review. I was about review. to say that. Can you, is there a way of cheating yeah. the system? I mean, obviously, it can't be complete garbage, but yeah. I think, think it's probably fair to say that sort of a decent book can be elevated by really, really good reviews, whereas a really, really great book could also be sort of held back by... Um, you know, mediocre reviews. Mm. If, if your book is described as competent, <laughs> it's probably not going to sell. This book is thoroughly adequate. <laughs> it is neither bad nor good. <laughs> Might get that this for book the whole contains some solid good. words. Solid two and a half stars. <laughs> yeah. Can you? This is a question uh, that we briefly chatted about the other day when we weren't recording, but uh, can you buy. Your way to I good think reviews. you probably can. What What do you mean? Do you mean literally pay people to review positively? Uh, you must be able to, because you can buy you can buy followers on Twitter and uh, Instagram and that sort of thing. So, yeah, you must be able to. What buy world are we living in? A material world, Tom. That's where we're living. But how are we going to get listeners for this podcast? I think, you know, we need to maybe think I, about this. I mean, obviously we'll have to buy them. That goes <laughs> without saying. This is, this, that. That's a separate conversation. To, to buy affection. But, um, get us up the rankings. But you've got to, because like, even, yeah. even if you're the, like, a really, really popular person, uh -huh. um, <laughs> I, which I don't really know what that feels like, but even if you are, you, you're still not going to have more than, you know, even in extreme cases, you're not going to have more than a couple of hundred really good friends, are you? 
So at some point, you've got to extend beyond that circle to people who don't know you as an individual, still giving you good yeah. reviews somehow. Well, a lot of it's luck, isn't it? But I think eventually it does go full circle back to writing something <laughs> good in the first place. Well, yeah, I know, I know. But we're trying to escape <laughs> that conclusion. That's the last thing we want to have to do. <laughs> yeah, let's, we wanna, we're looking for the cheats yeah. in life, aren't we? And I think, unfortunately, yeah. a lot of it comes down mm, to luck. Yeah. All things being equal, yeah. Yeah, as, as, as does anything yeah, in yeah. life, I think, really. You know, I think you, you want to get philosophical right. about mm. it. Luck can just happen to be yeah. in the right place at the right you say time. You make or... your own luck, but I think that's probably bullshit. I think that is absolutely bullshit. I think that's what successful people say. They don't want to admit <laughs> yeah, that they've been exactly. lucky yeah. as well. That's the trouble. People that are yeah. successful, uh, I remember reading about a, a psychological study about it, that they're less likely to say that yeah. they've been lucky mm. until they get to yeah. super successful. Yeah. That was a book. I think it was that kind of thing. I might have just made no, that up I to suit my own argument. No, I think you're right. I think but, I've um, read a similar thing. It sounds yeah, true, doesn't it? I haven't read that many books recently, but I read a book, and now I can't remember what it was called or the name of the author, um, which is going to hold this conversation <laughs> back quite significantly. <laughs> but uh, I'll, have, I'll, I'll edit that in later on. <laughs> you, should we just wait, Dave, while you go and have a look? Yeah, no, we'll that in. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Um, but it was good. essentially the, the whole... Uh, hang, hang on. I'll, I'll have to look that up now because. Um... So, yeah, at this point, me and John thought that Dave might just go off and actually find the book and bring it back and go, oh, yeah, this is the book, but he, he never did. So, just to let you know, the book that Dave was thinking of was uh, Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers The Story of Success. There you go. Anyway, back to the podcast. But the, so, the, the basic gist of the book was looking at um, success and whether, you know, whether there are sort of other things behind success other than, you know, people say in order to be successful at something, you've got to put in 10,000 hours Mm. uh, of work or practice. And this was sort of trying to examine if there are other factors behind it. Mm. And the conclusion that it drew is that actually luck plays a significant Mm. uh, factor so and it looked at people like sort of Bill Gates and um, and the other Microsoft guy and Steve Jobs um, and these guys who sort of made made billions out of the sort of you know home computing boom. Um, they just happened to all be born uh, at pretty much the same time, same mm. period in history, in and in the same part of America mm. where they all had access to these particular uh, coding machines that they could use for free. Yeah, um, and People born a year before them didn't get to use them. People born a year after didn't get to use them. They got to use them and became sort of computing Mm. billionaires. And it looked at other things like uh, sort of ice hockey players um, in the sort of the big league in Canada. Like 90% of them were all born within a couple of months of each other. Wow. Yes, I remember reading about that. It's an obvious thing, isn't it? But when you're at school, Mm. if if you're born in September Mm. or October, then you have a physical advantage over people who were born in July or August of that year. I think there's there's parents in America that (laughs) hold back the kids. Yes. If if they think they're going to be good at American football. Yeah, absolutely. Because obviously size is a massive thing Mm. in that. So if your kid is getting on for 12 months older... Yeah. They will get the bet. They'll be in the top teams. They'll be in the top. Mm. They're the ones that get seen. They're the ones that stick exactly. out. Exactly. The ones that get signed. And it's you know it starts with sort of being picked first. If I was still in primary school now, I would be like, <laughs> if your in parents all the top had held teams. you back for like, yeah, I've been years. held back a mere <laughs> thirty-five years. I could have been. I'd have been yeah. in the Olympics pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Been a contender. But yeah, so but it, like you know, you start. It starts off with things like you know being picked first in the playground for your team or whatever. And then that means that you play a bit more, so you get picked for the for the school year team, and that means that you play even more, so you get picked for the next team. And it starts off as like a small advantage, but by the time you're sort of 12 or 13, mm. you've played a significant amount more of mm. that sport than people who were born later That's than year. So you get yeah. first pick, and yeah. And it sort of works in all walks of life that mm. um, there's usually some sort of little hidden advantage that successful people have had. That, um, that you know that, that allowed them to get where they are. Well, that's great. That's our excuse. Yeah. There you go. Happy days. That is our excuse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it doesn't excuse the fact that you've still got to be good at something. You've got to still got to do it well. Oh bollocks! But uh, there is a way to get like a leg up. So, 
looking ahead to next week, uh, I'm quite excited about this one. We've got another interview coming up. We have. A lady this time. A lady interview. E. Interview S? <laughs> interview. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody, a, lady, a lady that we're interviewing uh, yeah. who's written some proper stuff for television. She's been in writer's rooms, all sorts of things. Yes. So Also yeah. an actress and voiceover as well. Bit of a and polymath. I think she's got a name. We should probably say what it is. Or should we just leave it? There's some kind of surprise. Should we do like Hangman and just give uh, people one letter <laughs> at a time or something? Yeah, yeah. Let's say uh, it's one syllable, uh, four that, letters. I, I'm not sure Sherrard's is going to work particularly well on a podcast, though. <laughs> no, that's true. It might, we might I appreciate your effort and everything. All right. Let's difficult. just say it's... Is it Jurassic Park? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a velociraptor. Um, <laughs> managed it. to write, even with that little claw hand. Um it's Beth Chalmers is going to be with us next week. Very interesting and very funny lady. Um, so that is going to be an exciting interview for everyone, for almost <laughs> everyone involved. Yes, poor Beth. Uh, and in the meantime, if you've enjoyed the show, and let's face it, who wouldn't have? Uh, everyone will um, have done immensely. Everyone will have done uh-huh. because it's been it's been interesting, hasn't it? Subscribe. Uh, very importantly, tell your friends about the Failing Writers podcast because that's how we're. I mean, I would say. Don't just tell them about it. Like, literally, maybe lock them yeah, in a room sit them down. and play it to them. <laughs> yeah. Force your friends to listen. Yeah. Like the Clockwork Orange, but uh, open up your ears instead of your eyes. Uh-huh. That scene. Yeah. And we're not above bribing yeah. as well. I mean, if you want if you want to prove that you've uh, listened to some of the episodes, we're, we're happy to pay. I mean, I haven't got much, but... Um... What have I got? I've got one of those. I've got one of those pens with four different colours on it. There you go. We could probably send there you go. one of them. Post a screenshot of you subscribing to us on Twitter or whatever or Facebook, and we will send you a curly whirly. <laughs> that sounds like an is offer. That, have I gone too? Is that too much? No one could. Just one of the small ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they are quite small. A fun now pack one. these days, aren't they? That's true. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And you might even get Dave's pen. So. Uh, it's definitely yeah, I mean, most of the blue and the black have gone. Yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of red. There's a load of green. I never used a green <laughs> one. So. I think I was told when I was yeah. a kid it was rude to write in green. What <laughs> <laughs> someone said, don't. It's very rude to write in and green. Ever <laughs> since, Tom has only ever written in green. Of all the things, we bring our kids up right. They don't write in green. They don't write in green, black or blue, red if it's a mistake. <laughs> Green for people we hate. That's the rhyme we do in this house. <laughs> Fishy potatoes with some creamy bits. Hello. Hello. Where's everybody gone?